Hey guys, welcome to uh, today's lecture on concrete. Um, so now we're going to be starting our practicals 4 and 5. Um, first practical is going to be um, this model that we came up with and then practical 5 will be the reinforcement. So um, I'm in a structural template. Um, obviously everything we do is going to be in structural. Um, structure, so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my grids. So hopefully everyone is familiar with how to do these now. I'm going to make these four and a half meters, um, six meters, then another four and a half. Then I'm going to come across this way, change this to be a letter, make another grid, uh, eight meters to there. Cool. So hopefully you're all familiar with how to set these out. <clears throat> um, next thing I do when starting up um, or setting up a new project is obviously my levels. So I'm just going to move these up a little bit for now. Um, level one and two. Right click, um, create similar um, or LL on the keyboard will work as well. Um, so first one, I'm going to come down um, three meters just for a basement. Um, I'll rename all of these after. Um, put this on there. Uh, level three, create similar. Actually, I'll rename this one first. So this is going to be my basement. So we're going to be my ground floor. Right click, uh, create similar. Um, I'm coming up now three and a half meters. Level two. And then I'll be coming up another three and a half meters. Level three. Cool. Oh, just tie that up. I need to do a good job at lining these up, but it's okay. Awesome. So now I've set my levels. I'm um, happy with that. Let's come back to our level one. Um, and now we're going to do is we're going to start putting in some uh, columns. So structure column. This gives me a rectangular column. Um, what I want is a square column. So low family. Uh, where are we? Structural columns, concrete, and concrete square columns. So 300 by 300, I'm going to use a 450 by 450 column and I'm going to put these at the grids. So I can either click them in one by one or I can go at grids, this one and tick. All right, and that's going to put in these columns. Um, if I look at my 3D, I get these short little stocky columns sitting in here, All right, just between my ground floor and level one. So what I want to do is I want these to go the entire way up to my um, roof level. Um, so these are going to go from the basement all the way up to level three. Vertical, top offset, we can change this after. Um, and I'll change my structural material. Um, I'm going to make it um, 40 MPA concrete the whole way through. And I can change my rebar cover um, later, but it's going to be 25 at the moment. All right. So now if I look at my 3D, my columns are going the whole way up. All right. um, so a couple more things I need to do. Um, each level is going to have a slab. It's going to have um, supporting beams as well. So what I'll do first is I might put in um, my slabs. So if I come to level one, uh, slab. Now this is a 150 millimeter foundation slab. I'm going to make this 100 millimeters. 
and it's going to be 40 MPA concrete cast in place. And this is, sorry, I have to edit type duplicate and then go through this again. Forty. Okay. Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> just for a kind of different little model, I'm going to actually have a bit of a, a cantilever here with my slab. So I might offset it um, 600. So from that corner to that corner. All right. Um, can change every back cover later. This is okay. So I click the tick. All right. Um, now remember we're learning how to model, not how to do the actual concrete design. You'll be learning these in your um, structural analysis class and in any um, further studies. So for now, this is my slab. So my finished floor level is sitting on my level one. So if I try copy, copy down my grid lines. So I'm going to need one on my ground floor. Copy again, I'm going to copy multiple now from this point. Now I'm not going to have one in my basement. Okay, um, we're going to have, I'll show you this later, but this is going to be where our foundations are sitting. I'm going to put one on my level two, and then one on my level three, which the one on level three is effectively um, the, the roof. And then we might have an elevator shaft sitting up for access to the roof. All right. So if I look at my 3D now, I'm just going to turn off my analytical model. So it gets rid of the green and bring us into shaded. So now I'm getting a bit of a concrete structure standing up. Um, I'm going to adopt and change a few things now. Now here I can see these columns. I can see them sitting up the whole way. So these columns are going to sit on the bottom of this slab. So I might select all of them. And I'm going to change my top offset to negative 100 to bring it to the bottom of my slab. That's better. Um, so that's looking a bit nicer. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is these columns here are actually going to form um, some shear walls or core walls of our building. Now the purpose of the core walls are to withstand any um, wind loading, lateral loading or earthquake loading. Um, usually they're done in precast um, and you'll find them either as long walls or quite often the elevator shaft is used for them. So if I come back to my level one there's a few different ways we can do it. So I can um, just alter these. So I can go edit type, duplicate, and go um, 250 by say 2700. And then alter some of these, some of my um, depths and things like that. Um, Sorry, for that we have to use changes to a rectangular column and then change it. But for us, we're going to just get rid of these. Structure wall. Um, we're going to use a generic 300 millimeter wall. And then from this intersection, I'll come down 2700. Escape. From this intersection, I'll come down 2700. Right. select both of them. My base constraint will be my basement, uh, base offset of zero, and my top constraint will be level three. So now if I look here, I have these walls running the entire way up. Again, I'll do my top offset. Uh, my top offset of negative 100, so I sit at the bottom of the slab. And these are what our core walls are going to start to look like. All right. 
So I have to put in some beams as well. Um, we're not going to have just a spanning floor here. We'll have to support it with some beams. Um, so level one, beam. Uh, use a rectangular concrete beam. Edit type, duplicate. This is going to be the width of my column. Um, and I'm just going to make them 300 in depth. So B, 450, D, uh, H, sorry, 300. And this will span from the midpoint of my columns. Now what you're going to find is you're going to have to do this for every single floor. You're not going to be able to do these um, and copy them. So I want to try to connect the end point here, which is a little bit difficult, but it's that. And then same thing from here to there. So that will get me one floor done. So if I look at my 3D, it's sitting here at my level one, there's these beams here. Okay, if I look at my north, uh, I can see they're sitting a bit high up again. So SA, select all. Um, I'm gonna drop these all by the thickness of my slab again. So now they sit at the bottom. All right. Um, like I said, if I select all of them, copy, this is going to be a lot simpler. Right. Um, depending how you've modeled these, um, sometimes you cannot copy up. You might have to redo them in each floor. That's depending on where your work plane is. All right. But this is putting in all of our beams, which is good. Um, now what I want to look at doing is putting in an elevator shaft, um, and then we'll start looking at some set downs and things like that. So to put in a void, if I come to my level one, um, just gonna hide this. Um, and what I'll do now is, um, sorry, I'll unhide that. Going to try to find just a, an elevator void to cut through. Um, what I mean by that is, um, in our architecture, uh, what I can do now is basically cut a shaft or a hole the whole way through. So if I come here to shaft, what I'm doing is putting in an opening. Um, but what I want to try to do is try to get it roughly in the midpoint between things, um, just for simplicity. All right, so all I'm doing now is just working out my midpoints and then I work out an even ratio to put these in. All right, there's no set things. Um, obviously, as an engineer, you have an architect and architectural constraints for things. Um, but for us just learning modeling principles, this is going to be okay. Um, so this is the midpoint. I want to go half each way and half each way. So... Bring this up, bring this up. Um, what I can do now is with a line tool, midpoint, find, oops, sorry, these two midpoints, and then basically just mirror about the axes. Then I'll delete this one, delete that one. So that's going to give me a void. Um, what I'll do is change my base constraint to be my basement and my top height to be level three. I can take that to zero. Apply, click the tick. We'll look at my 3D. What I've done now is just cut this shaft or this hole the whole way through. Um, and this is what I'm going to use for basically the position of my elevator. All right. Um, so level one, structure, 
wall. Now our structural walls here, um, we can put in our rebar settings as well, um, and they're bearing walls. So um, what I'm going to do now is um, my wall face. So just changing where I'm locating these from. So obviously that shape is where the walls are going. So this is what I want. This space is the clear spacing for my elevator. So I'm just going to form my walls around it. Okay. Now if I click one of these, go SA, click them all, edit type. Um, what I need to do is this function. Okay, it's not an exterior wall, it's actually a core shaft. Okay, or a core wall. So come to my 3D. This is where we're at so far. Um, just going to now select these walls here, or even select them all, and then come back through these constraints again. Um, top constraint, level three. So I'm just going to bring it the whole way up. Uh, negative 100, apply. All right. Um, I don't know why these haven't gone to the bottom, but I'll just re edit these. Sorry, basement. Sorry, it's just a little mistake I made. My base is my basement. Okay. Now these here have a negative 3000, should be zero. All right, that's looking a bit better now. So we've got these. Um, I'm going to extend this elevator just up a little bit, just to get any surfaces on the roof. Um, so here, I'll come back to my level one. So just selecting just these core walls. Uh, my top offset um, is going to be, I'm going to make it say 3000 meters above that roof level. Apply. So now it's coming right up to the top um, and I'll just seal this with a slab for a roof, um, which is going to be on my level three. Um, structure slab, 100 millimeter slab. I'm gonna leave that detached for now. Uh, where's that slab gone that I've just drawn? Sorry guys, whoops. Now I have a slab hiding somewhere from me. I can't find it. Yeah. That's it sitting there. So I'm going to move this um, back up to the top of these walls. So 3000 will get me to here. So I'll make it 3100 to the top. Uh, just to cap off this shaft here. Uh, um, from here, now what I'll do is just put some openings in. So my north elevation um, obviously this wall here is this side, which isn't a good opening. I'm going to put the openings on this face. Um, so if I change the face that I'm modeling in, so west, which is this front face. I'm just trying to find as to which elevation it is. So that is that wall. There's this wall here, sitting on the other side. So east, that looks better. And um, the other way I can do it is obviously from my 3D, come on top, north, east, south, west. So it's obviously gonna come from the east. 
That's the elevation that I'm looking at. So east elevation, um, this wall here, um, I come for a wall opening. Uh, so we start drawing as to where we want to open things up from. Um, and what we want to do is kind of work out roughly where the halfway mark is and make a um, opening. So if I go annotate, detail line, uh, so I know the midpoint between this wall thickness, okay, is obviously by 300 this side, 300 this side, um, it's spanning in between it, so to there. If I look to here, it's 300, so I have a thickness of a wall, thickness of a wall. Um, so now, again, the midpoint to that level. So this is my dividing line. So this just gets me the width of it. Um, now what I want is um, I'm going to make my opening 1800 wide by 2100 high. So I should be able to do this just without drawing in any more detailed lines. Um, I select the face of the wall. I'll draw an opening now. Uh, so this is going to just select that line, help me draw an opening from it. I'll move it after. So if I go 18, I'll click somewhere, modify, modifying this. 1800 wide. Uh, now I've got to modify the height. So that's going to get me to 2600 roughly. Just manipulating this. Okay, I know this line when I measured before was 2600 from the floor. Now I'll move it down um, to 2100, so 500 down. So the height of my wall. Now this is the midpoint line, where I want to move this from its midpoint to the midpoint that I set out before. Delete, delete. So this here should be exactly um, in the center. 1400, just check this side. 1400, awesome. So now it's in the exact middle. Um, come to 3D, and this is what we've done. So we just cut an opening in here for where our um, elevator will open up. All right. um, and I can just go through now, uh, copy, the whole way down my building. Come to here, and now what I've done is I've modeled very quickly um, my columns, my supporting beams, my core walls, and my core walls acting as an elevator shaft. All right. um, I'll pause this recording here, and I'll move on to the next parts in the next recording.